I'm not thinking about writing a hit song first. Most of the time, I'm seeing if I can write a good song. It's very elusive. The performance, the voice, the melody, the production, the newness of things that you've not heard before. Something that's memorable, people can quickly catch on, hopefully sing along to, is something that you want to have fun with. In days past, right, it used to be that a fantastic melody would just sell the song. But there are certain songs that have very simple repetitive motifs that need a great dressing up from the music arrangement, like you know, a certain beat, a certain synthesizer uh, motif. All these things are really part of making an identity for the song that makes the song enjoyable. Lah. Basically, in a, in a nutshell, that's what I do. Yeah, I think I'm starting verse 2 like that also. Oh. I think I'm keeping like Symmetry. verse 2, yeah, symmetrical. This, this one, this is definitely... The better. second one is better, right? Producer is the person who is sitting down there and making all the big decisions of which direction the song should travel. It's still my decision as the artist to commit to something. I think in a lot of areas, he's my boss. And then in some areas, I'm his boss. <laughs> I think this I is something song. that... Change song. Quick. You sit. <laughs> You don't quit, you sit. It's true that the music producers are not as known, you know. Most people will not even reach to the back of the CD to read the names. And these days, there are no places to write the credits anymore. It's quite sad, no? So most of the time, you, you don't really know who created a bulk of the, the creative things. Very honoured and very happy to be working with friends, among friends. Over here, we have Christine, um, you know, really famous keyboard player. And then the legendary Jimmy Lee. If you don't know Jimmy Lee in the drumming world in Singapore, you have to go and do something about that. <laughs> Daniel is one of the most famous guitarists in Singapore, seriously. The majority of Singaporeans don't know me and it makes sense because I sing mostly in Tamil. I'm cool with that. But what's interesting is every time when I share my Tamil songs with them, they could be from Europe, they could be from America, they could be Chinese and Malay friends. They're almost always very interested after they listen. It's like, damn, this is really good. If anything, let that become popular. So we have this thing coming. And if you listen to it, it kind of transits from the old school tape sound. And it slowly like just like walks into this like uh, current sound. Like, there's this like whole Kawali. Islamic technique. devotional music, Kawali. Yeah. It's eclectic, but it's weirdly accessible, I think. As one particular year, I went to NDP and like, I just felt that there was a lot of like, uh, cultural appropriation going on. And the Indian segment comes and the whole float is laughing. There is this thing called Konakol, okay, which is the very beautiful vocal percussive art form. So this thing is done in a very exaggerated fashion by the performer who's wearing like this loud turban and it just looks ridiculous. And the whole float is laughing. So it's like, why would you laugh at one particular segment? Then you start asking the question and nobody wants to do it deliberately. Misrepresentation happens when there's a lack of representation. We want to change that in our own way. Like we're not going to shy away from our roots. We're very proud and happy about it. But at the same time, we also want you to enjoy it. You. I was in a band. I was also in a band. Joined a gang because uh, in primary school I was bullied a lot. There were a couple of people who made some comments about the colour of your skin. So you beat me, I'm gonna beat you back. No more keeping quiet. And the music thing was always part. Uh, that was me. The gang thing was not really me. Some members of the tribe could actually uh, play instruments. So we decided to come out and like find other people and form a band. I was the first one to write a song. I was 12 years old, so it was a heartbreak song. Of course, at 12, you know, I wasn't heartbroken or anything. <laughs> Initially, it was really chaotic. I was in my 20s, yes. And I'm always in my 20s, by, by the way. Yeah, I think it can bleep all that. Like. Yeah, so um, I was in this band, right, that's Culture Voucher, and, and it prided itself upon having more than like 17 instruments and all. So there was this guy who's amazing. His name is Lawrence Liao, and he played too many. And so there came a certain day that he said, um, guys, I'm, I'm leaving. The band turned to me and said, uh, can you go and learn all these things? And so in two months, for people to learn one instrument is already like, are you mad? 
like this is like Gu Zhen, Sita, Pipa, Erhu, and then you never know what you are able to do. You just jump. I must say there was there was really a, a drop and a turn in, in my life lah. When the band ended and then I went back to the lounges, there's this sense of escapism that you kind of like, I oh, don't care everything else, just been here and now and I felt life was like just going down, marriage wasn't good. If you're not careful, it does consume you. Uh, we kind of get into a very, very, very big like gang fight with another gang. I'm surrounded by the opposite gang alone. At that point, I say that no, we're done. And then I get a call from MediaCorp saying that you are, you know, qualified for Vasan Star. That's how it started. I never win. Singing contest, I'm number three. In school, sports, I'm like runner up. So for the first time when I win, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to accept that I just won something. After the band ended, I went back to the jazz club. I was playing with great players. And so we were having a really creative and good time playing song after song. And you create moments and, and if you feel like, wow, it's, it's, it's short, it's nice. And then you look up and uh, oh, there were like five cats. Two of them were listening, three of them were not even listening. And then you realise that all this effort just went into the chairs and tables. Uh, that's why I realised that um, I had one life. And so if I had to do something, I want it to be more impactful. Yay, Chi, thanks for buying the stuff. You want to share half a hot dog? I remember at, at some point of life, we had this conversation and then she said like, so what are you going to do if you're not going to play in the band? <gasps> There's always this worry of like, where where does the bread come from? But um, no, they, we haven't really been worried much. Uh, I haven't been worried much. I'm a bit of a dreamer, maybe. No, like cannot listen to, to the voice of fear. You cannot. You cannot listen to the voice of fear. And I went to knock on the door at Ocean Butterflies production. They had an arm that were doing demos. And so after they buy it, right, they probably just throw away the arrangement and they redo the thing all over again. So it was that kind of a job. I would play a solo. I would, no, one's, no one would extend the song until that point, like a bit sion. Nah. But I just saw an opportunity for a song and I, if it's there and I feel it, I should put it in. And so um, some people label it as a shitty job, but if you don't see it that way, then you allow yourself to shine. In some way, it will still come back to you. Honestly, I was thinking after winning Vasanam Star, I will go to India and do become a composer for films there. I was naive. I didn't know that the Singapore industry is not in any way even mildly connected to the industry in India. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I did, did um, Bete, the first soundtrack. And the soundtrack is a big hit. And then you're thinking that it's great and all that. Then you go to India and someone listens and says that, this is, your ideas are very good, but your technical capabilities, like the mixing and things like that, they're not up to standards. What the f does he know? You know, that kind of thing and all that. <laughs> then later, they're like, hmm, kind of settles in. And uh, yeah, the most important thing is what do you do after that? Do you allow yourself to be discouraged? Or do you allow yourself to improve yourself and become better? So Yarim is my biggest song, the Indian cinema industry and the Tamil music industry. It's got a collective um, YouTube streams of 150 million. People were buying tickets to go to the film to watch the song. That's how big the song was.
I hopped on to Steph Sun's album. Oh, then it was just fireworks. Oh. Yeah. I don't have many awards. Like, if you compare to like people who have a lot of awards, right? Children's Workshop only. The, there were 10 nominations. They were all mainly Singaporean. There was Terence Steel, King Long, Martin Tang. And so when I, when I was the underdog, but I got the award instead, right? It gave me the affirmation that I was made to do this. There's some words that, that you know, uh, through the years, some of them wrote for me that I felt very encouraging. Like, <laughs> still a whiz after all these years. Thanks so much for all these years and brotherhood and professionalism. Wow. It's from JJ. And then Steph wrote me this song, which I remember. Um, I treasure a lot. He says, a lot of my achievements are not possible without your magic touch. You are truly one of the best arrangers I've ever known. Thank you very much. Steph. When I came in, it really opened me to a world of dissonance and clashness. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Whatever that I wasn't used to. Two months here is totally like a five years studying in, I don't know, university uh, or what? He was, a, he was an intern. He was the most promising one. He was talented enough, I guess, but then mainly he's a very team player as well. So in, in all the things that we do, right, I think team player is really important. It's not like one prima donna and then the rest must listen. I don't, I don't go for that. The next one would be probably your ability to bring out the best of the arranger or the, the mixing engineer or especially the artist. Sometimes you don't have a light bulb moment. It's just plowing through. If you're just waiting for inspiration to strike and you're saying that I will start working when I feel good, no. A lot of people say this about producers. You're only as good as your last hit. So yeah, I do think it's very important to kind of reinvent yourself. Variation in life. We are constantly evolving and changing. And what is a Singaporean is a big question. And because our city goes through so much changes, we have difficulties holding on to something, you know? So we're always looking out. We kind of uh, assimilate into the global music sensibilities rather than taking something out from Singapore and putting it out there. We don't really live the experience like Italians, for example. They will like wow over a pizza, they will wow over their clothes and their cars, they will pour that much fire, you know, flamenco dancer, it's just a nylon guitar. We don't have that habit yet, you know. So the only way is if the whole generation of us um, change. And like, you know, when, when it's time to think, you think. But when it's time to live, live lah so that it becomes life. And hopefully from that, a sound will come out of it and then Singapore Pop will flourish even more. I wish I had a singer here, but like that. Oh. <laughs>